Um, it, the first thing comes to mind without a question is Ricky Fulton in the Mother Goose at the Kings in Edinburgh. And I looked up the date this morning because I wasn't sure what age I was, and it was 1982, so I was eight. Um, and I come from Lanarkshire, so I, I had no access to theatre really at all. But every year we went to the pan to either the Kings in Glasgow or the Kings in Edinburgh. And um, it was profound. <laughs> And and that's why I'm a huge fan of Panto because uh, the access for people who don't know what theatre is really or so and he was phenomenal and I remember utterly believing that that was he was the mother and he had a goose that laid golden eggs and I remember being on the edge of my seat and almost hyperventilating at how beautiful everyone was the dancers the set it was. It was transforming. So yes, that's my first memory of theatre and uh, utterly believing it, utterly. I think there are so many and at different stages of your life, it's like, um, I suppose, watching a great film. The, every year you watch it, it becomes different to you. So theatre is kind of different in that way. It kind of, I suppose, you just grab it at the right time for you. And the most recent one, actually, um, because I think sometimes you, you see so much theatre and nothing really gets the fire in your belly going. There, you seem to go through phases. And then there's one you go, thank goodness I go to theatre still. And it was Footfalls at the Sits with Kath Howden and Kay Galley. Um, you don't see Kay Galley at all. She's behind. And it was the both of them, actually. I can't single one out. They're, the way it was shot, if you like, it was very cinematic. It was panoramic. The lighting was done from the side, which was unusual, so it was all side lit. And Kath Howden just had her hair over her head and was walking up and down the whole length for the whole play, just pacing. And she just had this weariness and this, this agony. And Kay's voice in the background was equally agonising. And it didn't really have a, a sort of linear story, it was just thoughts and jumble, and it was... Uh, profound because of that and uh, I just remember again equally like the Ricky Fulton sitting at the edge of my seat and desperately unhappy when it ended and that's that's unusual for theatre for me <laughs> it's unusual that you're captivated and I was I couldn't speak after it and I tried to speak to Dominic Hill but I was I, didn't, I, was like, <laughs> I couldn't articulate it and um, and I was glad I was with my partner um, to discuss it afterwards. Um, and that's lovely. Weeks after, you can be in the kitchen and go, oh my God, that's what that means, or that's what that means. And, um, and what you can do with voice as well, what you can do with lighting, um, and what you can do with not seeing someone. Didn't see Kay till the very end and she came out and was gracious and wonderful. So yes, that was the last thing I've seen that I was utterly um, enchanted with. Yeah. There are, there are so many. I'd love to yeah, do Antigone. I'd love to do Jocasta. I'd love to do the Greeks um, as opposed to Shakespeare. Um, I, f I feel that they're not done enough, almost. Um, but the, the sort of more... I love comedy, and I think it's the hardest medium to do. And I also think as well, in this business, you kind of... Some people either see you as comedy or not. So I'd, I'd love to do Mrs. Robinson from The Graduate, actually. That's when, because it's a mixture of comedy and tragedy, if you like, um, and it has that darkness to it and that manipulative sort of uh, interest. So it's quite a, it covers a whole plethora of um, character, if you like. So yes, she's the next one I'd like to, maybe 50. When I'm 50, I might be able to play that, but I'll work up to it. So yes, Mrs. Robinson is the, the one I'd like to do next. Immediately when I read this question, Buster Keaton came to mind. I'm a huge Buster Keaton fan. And I thought, well, actually, that's not really... I, I suppose I was thinking, I want it in Scotland. I started to sort of break it down, bring it closer to home. And I thought of Stan Laurel, um, just that generation of performers, really, as opposed to actors, um, just because they, they learned their craft and they learned it in front of a really tough Glasgow audience. <laughs> and um, and I, 
I take my hat off to them and their perseverance and their, and before television, I suppose they, had, they did maybe six, seven shows a night and traveled all over. And that period of, of Scottish variety, if you like, really fascinates me and, uh, and how they really learned their craft and how to work an audience. And I think we don't, we've kind of lost those skills a wee bit along the way, I think. Um, and yes, so I, I'm going to stick to Stan Laurel, I think. I'd love to have seen him um, as a young boy and then later on with him and Oliver Hardy as well. So yes, they're my ones. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>